so sorry it's been a while. Not forgetting you, I promise. Though sometimes I do pretend you're home, washing the car, scrolling through Facebook, having a beer on the porch, and taking one of those selfies mom found on your phone the other day. I sent her a light love. How silly you looked, holding the camera a bit too low. The angle drawing folds on your chin, you were smiling. The kind where your lips were still holding on to each other, the way we are still holding on to you. I wish we could go back in time. I would have told you to tilt up the camera a bit. You would have laughed. I am not crazy, I promise. I know you are gone, but sometimes it is easier to pretend you are somewhere watching over me. Tell me, did it make you smile, watching me laugh with my entire body? It was funny, wasn't it? When T thought I had smudged the smoothie all over my face. You can be honest, I promise. How does it feel to watch your daughter moving through it all? Every step a symphony, every breath a song. Stirring the coffee, staring at the sky, watching the pink clouds. How does it feel to watch my bouncy walk? Stepping on the stage, falling in love. Growing into a woman full of joy and love and wisdom in a world without you. If you can see all of that, surely you also know I'd rather be there holding the camera with you. Thank you. I wonder if my lineage is one of fearful women, ones devoted to their husbands in a way my generation might label as toxic. My grandmother met her husband at age 16. Prestige was in the college degree and the stable salary he had. Marriage was simpler back then. Wedding vows exchanged within a few months of knowing each other's names. I imagine her parents proudly giving their daughter away. Women in my family have always, um, sorry, women in my family have always had the role of the carer really well. I remember my grandmother making her famous doll late at night, carefully set them into tiffin tears for each child long after they've left her home. In the morning, we'd wake up to the smell of fenugreek and ghee and run straight into grandma's arms. We always sat on the sides, the front seat of the table strictly reserved for the men. We served dinners to the breadwinners and never once was a thank you uttered into those spaces. It took me 20 years moving into a foreign land to realize that wasn't normal, the way my grandmother went down to her knees to scrub the floors clean at age 60. She didn't trust the mop to do the job her mother had taught her to do, and the mother before her mother. Perhaps it was not the act of scrubbing itself, but more so what it stands for. Knees married to the floor till every part of her was sore. A woman willing to sacrifice her comfort for the sake of tradition. The way conversations about feelings were never really a thing. Mom would swallow her words in fear of upsetting dad. And dad was crushing and worrying from all the responsibilities he had. Perhaps that's why women in my family were always so loud. They had grown tired from years of suppressing the desires, thinking screaming was the only way to be heard. Inheritance is accidental. I see my ancestors in the way I am so eager to play hostess, anticipate a person's needs, the instinct to people please. 
I see my ancestors in tidy rooms and sparkling floors. In the way, I'm not afraid to tell my partner how I feel. My desire for independence, but we take turns to wash the dishes. In a way, I am everything women in my family were, and everything they didn't get a chance to be. If it weren't for them and all the men devoted to the traditional roles, I wouldn't be here today reading this poem to you. Thank you. I've drowned before. First time in a swimming pool when I was four. I remember vividly the initial confusion that muddled my little brain when I couldn't feel the floor against my feet. The deep blue of the pool shimmering before my eyes. Sweet, sweet stench of chlorine up my nose all the way down to my throat. It burned slowly. Then came the panic with a bang. It shivered through me, hot and cold. They call it fight or flight. I remember moments not so right. Heart thumbing ferociously against my chest. How long was I there for? Breathing so hard only to feel myself choke. How long till someone saves me? Each blink blurrier than the last. How long do I have to break this up? A child under the watchful eyes of her mom, of course I was saved wrapped up in warmth and skate. My swimming lessons began the next day. I promise never to let this happen again. But how can they keep a promise that wasn't even theirs to make? Silly really to think swimming lessons have prepared me well when drowning doesn't always come with a warning bell. You don't need to jump into a pool to panic. Jumping into someone's arms does just the same. They call it fight or flight. I remember moments not so right. Heart thumbing ferociously against my chest. How long was I there for? Breathing so fast only to feel myself choke. How long till someone saves me? Each blink blurrier than the last. How long do I have to break this up? Irrational, I tell my thoughts. There's no water for you to drown. Slow down and tell my breathing. Your nervous system's in overdrive. Relax, I tell my heart. Not everyone's out there to hurt you. One last time, kicking the limbs desperately with all my mind. Breathe, I just want to be all right. I'm so tired of hating my body. I feel inadequate, delicate, fumbling over these steps. I cannot do this anymore. This, as I'm waking up sick from the dissipation of my reflection in the mirror. This, as in the flesh under my belly, playing judge and jury, should I grab an apple or a scalpel? What is it today? I pray to crave exactly what my body needs. Tell me why every meal tastes like I'm losing. Bless me with this knowledge, this acceptance of self, the self never quite accepting itself. I cannot do this anymore. This, as I'm repeatedly telling myself food is fuel, you have to eat, please, eat, please. This, as in the panic shuddering through my being. The creases on my stomach dictating what dress I can wear today. As in the need to shrink down to my flesh and bones, understanding that this is not right, yet not having control over my thoughts some days, most days, sometimes, all the time. Please, teach me how to not judge my body. How to suit myself on these triggering days. Help me find shelter within the folds of my skin. How to caress the softness, loosen the grip. Untangle me from the narrow expectations of myself. Lift me up into a generation of women unlearning all that we have been taught. 
and seeing all that we have seen, allowing our bodies to expand with our breaths. Convince me that I am so much more than how I think my body looks. Help me create distance from these thoughts. I am so tired of hating my body. I cannot do this anymore. Moments that make me want to sink deeper into your skin. You bringing my favorite chocolate bar on our second date. When you squeeze me so tightly, all oh, my softness melting onto you. The early moments of the day, crusty eyes and morning breaths, never wanting to leave for bed. Forehead kisses that make me feel like a schoolgirl. The way I have to tiptoe to reach your lips. The poems that spill out of your mind, the ones that rhyme unlike mine. You tell me not to write it down, just enjoy it for now. The way you make me feel so present. Meditating by the canals that first time we met. How I feel so comfortable in our silence. You are my patron saint of touch. That first time you told me never to fake an orgasm. When you prioritize my pleasure before yours. I shed away layers of me, almost certain you'd leave. But you surprise me over and over again. They say, you're never too much for the right person, and I think they might be right. You make me more sure of myself in the way you consistently show up. On my bad days, you explain to me how my body works over and over and over until I accept that I am more than good enough. Your voice guiding me through Matagovana to love is to be kind, the way you're concerned about me. How you pulled me in that first time I saw the flowers on the memorial bench. You're always there when my grief hits. Always, always holding space for me. Your actions speak louder than your words. How you arrived two hours early on my birthday to set up the place. How you let me order both things on the menu to share. How you replace my lost remote without me asking. How you're not afraid to admit when you're wrong or share your most intimate fears. You are so patient with me, so honest with me, so good for me. Stay, hold me a little tighter.